This is to save our environment a billion dollar gift because we can't just go back. This is a discussion about how to create hydroelectric power in the ocean itself as opposed to at the bottom of a dam. There's really very little difference in it. The amount of water that's on top pushes down against the turbine and it turns the turbine which turns the generator and that creates electricity. We can do that in an ocean if we just use a simple machine. We'll get to that in a bit. What we have to do is use mechanical advantage to create a rotating valve that then pushes out the water after we take the pressure from it. So our machine is going to turn a large uh, turbine at the bottom to get a mechanical advantage and then we'll transfer that to a smaller valving system up above which essentially jacks out the water as opposed to pushing it out we're going to hydraulically jack it out very similar to the way a car or a truck is jacked up with a hydraulic jack for a little bit of effort on your part you can raise an entire machine that is very heavy same is true of pushing water back into the ocean we are simply going to take a mechanical advantage transfer it into a hydraulic pressure point small holes that we then push the water back out. It'll be thousands of holes that push the water back out, but nonetheless it's still the same principle. And with a rotating uh, uh, valve system and the proper uh, design to that, we can you know, push water ahead of ourselves and, and cause it to go out the holes. We'll uh, look at that in just a bit. I'll try to make this as simple as possible. So we begin with this. Uh, it's uh, just the short version. This is a an impeller just like a hydroelectric dam uses basically. It's on this spinning shaft that's attached to the generator down here. All right so that's how we get our electricity. We're going to turn this impeller with the pressure that's in the ocean at depth. We're going to then have water without pressure in this area and we have to remove it. So then we have this uh, turbine down here, this rotating turbine. This is a half, a cutaway view. Uh, it just gives you a half source. So like the blue here, this is all water. These are ports here. So water comes in here. It turns this impeller, this rotating turbine and it forces water, the pressure of the water comes up here and it engages into this, this uh, generator impeller here that turns the generator. So this arm is substantially bigger, it creates a lever action against this valving assembly up here. And this is a metered flow of water in a controlled environment so that we only get as much water as we can handle. So the water comes up here it acts and reacts against this valve train. This valve train, as you see here, this is one piece with the other side here. It comes up here. This is one piece. And water comes out here and interacts with that valve. So we have this arm, this lever arm turning here. We have, this is a one piece that sits on a bearing down here. And the water that comes in here has to come out in between this little area here. And, the, uh, and by, by creating enough water in there, we can uh, multiply the pressure and force that water out, just like a hydraulic jack does. Uh, a very similar process. This is piston displacement pumps. This is a secondary type of option. And uh, this is, you know, an action of high pressure water turns the, the turbine down here which turns the valving up here. The pressure of that water that's now into the machine turns the turbine up here where we take the pressure out of it and then we force the water back through these valves into the ocean. That's the, you know, these are just small little holes and they'll have a, a, a little one-way valve on it so that it pressure doesn't come back the wrong way. So uh, that's you know the basic basic machine. 
So water comes up here, it comes out of the turbine, and it comes out here, and then we're going to jack it back out into the ocean along the edge of this, this structural pipe here. This is the structural pipe. This is the ocean right here. Uh, you know, this is uh, this is how it works. This is basic hydro hydro uh, electric dam, except for all the all the facets of a hydro hydraulic hydroelectric dam are here. The height of the water determines the power that's available and unlike a hydroelectric dam which simply releases the water into a river below, we have to pump our water out which makes it less effective or less efficient than a hydroelectric dam. But nonetheless that doesn't mean we cannot do that. We can gain mechanical advantage here if we have enough efficiency and enough seals to keep everything where it belongs, to keep the water where it belongs, there's no reason we can't jack out the water and use the pressure to generate electricity for ourselves. That is the basic plan. Up here we have, you know, this is just structural members and, and, and plates and stuff. Don't let that worry you. So this is a generator down here. Now, other things that are important to understand about this particular machine is that we're not going to lose any excessive energy uh, between the, uh, uh, the impeller for the generator and the turbine that turns the valve. And that's because, <coughs> we'll look at it here, we'll just do it, you might be able to, uh, to uh, work with this better in the wind. We're just going to leave this as our, as our uh, uh, impeller here uh, or a block in the wind. So wind comes up and, it, and, uh, and the force of wind uh, has a flow and the, that flow uh, will have to divide and when it divides because we're immersed in the wind you don't really actually lose any energy no matter which direction it goes. It's, it's the same force. When it divides you know equally at least. So and then when you have more wind coming up the sides, you know, it has to go around, you have to push out the wind in order for it to, uh, to uh, spread and come around. So that actually increases or multiplies the force just a little bit here. Not a lot, but a little bit. But anyway, the necessary part to understand about that is that, that uh, in this particular machine, we're using horizontal force. That would be the force that's applied to the valve train through the turbine. And then we're using vertical force. That's the force that's applied to the generator impeller to turn that. So we're using two directions and the force is going to deride in two different ways and because we're immersed into the ocean itself, those forces are not going to compete with each other. They might actually enhance each other just a teeny bit. Another thing that uh, that wasn't really clear in the description is that we're just going to call this the turbine for the valve. And we have water coming in to uh, basically a, a question mark uh, area here. Actually this is, this is more involved uh, because the, the further out you go, the more torque you get involved with it. So the actual uh, design would be much, much more up here at the outside edge before it turns. But anyway, this is a horizontal force and then this turns to a vertical force here. And the actual metering of the water flow is down here a little bit below here. It's not, it's uh, represented as a little hole in, in this area in the little cup or that, that the force is directed against. But it's actually down here a little bit and you need to decide just how much water you need to allow in to keep the force constant. We then go to, uh, you know, the actual machine itself. Alright, so this is actually uh, the uh, basic SWWE, the, the machine that's intended to replace power plants in the ocean by using energy in there. This is an uh, actual drawing of an actual machine that would actually be placed in that water. Something similar to it at least. So, if you look here, we're going to uh, uh, have water come in through this point. It actually comes in through this little hole over here. 
and that meters the water that comes in here. That water comes in through here as a as an action from the from the ocean. That's where pressure is. It comes through a little port here. The water comes in here, comes up, and it hits the impeller for the generator here. It acts and reacts off that, and actually we're going to, uh, this is a valve drain. This purple part here is a valve drain that, that's going to push the water out. As water goes through the impeller, it's going to come out through the side and interlock with these uh, particular, you know, these thousand holes, little pressure points that push the water out into the ocean. Water will then come up. It will also come up through a, uh, a valving, an opening here to react against this particular portion that drives the, uh, the valve train as well. And it hits the second impeller, which again pushes out then the water to, uh, to into the ocean. That's not going to be enough to get rid of all the water most likely. So water that seeps into, uh, into the area here is going to come up either in this port it's going to we're going to create something in here to direct water upward if we need it and it's going to come up into this area which is a very close tolerance uh, uh, it uh, actually it looks like this over here this is uh, this is what the side of this particular little valve portion looks like it has what I call spaghetti lines they're just uh, incoming water comes in this way and it's pushed along the the, uh, the rib here, and it finds its way out through these the little ports here that, that push it again into the ocean. These are little elastic bands, and they act as one-way valves. When pressure is applied behind them, the electric band pushes out, and the water escapes, and the pressure from the impeller stops. The elastic band comes back in. That would be a stainless steel strap with springs or some such thing as that whatever can be made to work effectively, doesn't matter. This over here, actually you might as well get a, the, uh, the bottom valve train turbine down here, has little cups on it, and those little cups, water comes in this way, that pushes the, uh, the impeller this way to get a, a bigger reaction. We, uh, we have the, the metering lines come up in the opposite direction and they end up in this central area which is, which is this part down here. This is, this is uh, you don't see it, but, but this is where, where that little circle is. It's, it's the valve, the water entrainment part pipe here. So, and this is of course the same on this side, same as, as the other side. So we have a small hydraulic pressure point points here to push the water out. And then we have uh, a, a slightly closer tolerance and in in just an extension really of, of what we're doing down here, only a, a slightly more tolerant, a little bit, a little closer tolerances. In case that is not enough to push all the water out, we're putting piston displacement valves. This is a little bitty diagram of what they could look like. In other words, there, the water will come up here and it will go into into this area here and get picked up inside these uh, these pistons which are one-way valves out here and there are a displacement piston here and these are operating wheels as the spinning shaft turns around round and round it's going to go to turn the generator down here it's also going to turn these little wheels that engage these particular little displacement pumps and operate them as a as a piston style pump to get rid of any and all water that is not necessarily uh, uh, gotten rid of down here. That may or may not be necessary. That can be operated with a clutch, an electric clutch or a, or a, a positive displacement, you know, just uh, suction or any number of things can operate a clutch on that to engage it as needed or not. This is structure. Uh, you know, it simply holds the, the spinning shaft in place, and, and uh, this is down here. As a generator comes to the, at the bottom that you don't really see. Up here we have uh, the can. This is uh, this is a can that actually lowers down across and and will uh, will uh, engage the bottom part of uh, of the turbine here to seal it, and it'll engage the top part of the, of the pipe here to seal it so that this can actually be worked on at a later time. That just covers everything and seals it so water doesn't get in. That's a little bit hard, but 
to do, but uh, but uh, you have to have something to seal it up. And this is the simplest method to to not only uh, uh, allow for sealing it, as allow for a manhole up here, and and you could actually uh, uh, you know get into the outside and work on the machine while it's in the mo in the ocean. So. Uh, uh, that's the basically uh, the machine itself. Uh, doesn't have to be any more complicated than that. You can notice that these uh, little orange areas are sealing points. Some of that can be gotten rid of, maybe, with the right design. Some of the this bearing here could probably be gotten rid of. We don't necessarily have to have uh, this is structural here, so that has to stay. But this one could probably go, and it depends. We could put a, a pump in here, and you know there's any number of things to to do or be done. That's just simply the end of it. The reason I'm giving you a billion dollar machine, which is what I think that the value of a, a machine that will generate electricity without doing any environmental harm to speak of, it uses the uh, you know the natural consequences of rain and ocean and and you know the water cools the, the machinery the rain brings back the water that we use and pump uh, you know it just takes care of itself with very little environmental damage and the reason that is important is of course because of global warming which is melting a tremendous amount of ice thousands of cubic uh, miles of ice a year I don't remember how much tremendous amounts there is no issue Global warming is a fact. We have automobiles and fires are consuming more oxygen than this planet is releasing. We have problems with water. Did you know that uh, the aquifer that feeds the entire uh, 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 the mountainous region that used to be the Dust Bowl is nearly dry? Did you know that, that according to historical facts, the 20th century uh, had a 3% population rise per year, which means for every 33 people, one more appeared over deaths. So that's for a 100-year average, just over 3%. So we are 8 billion people today, even though your, your leaders and your universities lie about that and claim we're only growing at a half a percent, uh, one half of 1% per year. That's just a lie. We are not. The 100 average is 3%. 3% of 8 billion people is a quarter of a billion more people to feed over deaths each year. There are a lot of issues. And the biggest one, of course, is fusion. They have nothing but lies, nothing but theories that don't hold any water whatsoever. They are just plain fantasies. And they have a machine that they fully intend to ignite plasma into nuclear fire and that nuclear fire cannot be extinguished. There are endless amounts of, uh, of treason, actually, and terrorist acts, acts that are caused by the universities. And fusion, of course, is the biggest one. But, of course, then there's also DNA is nature itself. Without nature, we don't have anything. In exchange for my gift to you, I want you to give me an international trial, an opportunity for the world itself to provide evidence uh, based on truth, the present, presentation of facts to determine what is or is not a threat to us, to determine what can go wrong and whether or not we are willing to accept the cost of being wrong. We need a trial so that we have legal rights established so that we can control our own future and stop those who are in fact endangering our lives and will in fact make us extinct or certainly they can because the world has changed things that we couldn't do before we can do today and that is a terrible thing I am asking to create an international public trial to determine what is or is not a true threat to our lives, particularly by those who experiment as a university and do things that they should not do, things we cannot, we 
cannot turn back. <laughs> so I'm asking you to care enough to make that international trial a reality so that we can have a simple one time let's just decide as a world for ourselves if this is to be allowed or not because the cost of being wrong is our own extinction. We have a website called just talking7.info. You can do something, so do something. That's not too much to ask. And if you must, you can write to me here at this address just for the sake of trial. Not really for anything else, just for a trial. We have the right the legal right to defend ourselves and we have a moral and true obligation to our world and to our future and to every child to do so. That's the purpose of this whole thing.